Shady, you were first. I won't say that you were wrong. Oftentimes, being wrong can be misconstrued as being first. Now, when I say first, you were coached by Eric Bieniemy with the Kansas City Chiefs. You won a Super Bowl there. You contributed to that team en route to winning your first ring, but you have some honest comments about Eric Bieniemy. Always honest. Always honest as he transitioned to Washington. Well, now in Washington, in shocking fashion, the players are already complaining to the head coach that new offensive coordinator Eric Bieniemy is being a little bit too harsh. I need you to wait in someone with first-hand experience. You know, um, so when I heard Coach Rivera talk about it, I, the first thing, first thing I said was, I told y'all, I told y'all, the type of attitude that, that he uses to approach the game with is it, so outdated, right? You, you, you don't find coaches swearing the players out or cussing them out over the small details. And the first thing when I got to the Chiefs, I learned fast, like, whoa, that's his approach. He, he's cussing these dudes out. That, that's not coaching. That's yelling. And the funny thing is, these players are complaining. It's only been like two weeks. <laughs> it's been like two weeks. So you're going to get more of it and more of it. And I'm sure when Rivera made them comments, like, these are not freaking rookies complaining. The rookie ain't going to come to the head coach and talk about the, the, the coordinator. No. It's like the third string. These are starters, I'm, I'm sure. Point. These are really starters that's talking about, hey, man, hey, look, coach, hey, you know, I, I get it. He's coaching me hard, but I, I, I can't. My tolerance with him is, is running short. And he, and he wears on you. He, he over you know, yelling and, and complaining about every little small detail. It's like, how can I get better as a player? See, the problem, I think, with Eric bien as a coach, this, and I'm speaking only on experiences, is that he really can't relate to the players. And it sounds funny because he was, a, he was an ex-player. You would think he would know. That's what makes Andy Reid such a great coach, because he could adjust and adapt to every era of football, right? Back then, he was back there with, with, with the Packers back in the day. I'm sure it was a lot tougher how I communicate the players. And then as the, the game evolves, as he gets older, you have to learn how to adjust to these players. And that's the only thing I see with Eric Bieniemy is he doesn't know how to adjust to his players. And they're going to continue to talk about this. And there's another thing is we haven't, haven't even seen him have a, a bad game or loss. You complain after two weeks of camp. Imagine when you have a, a loss to the Eagles by, by 21 points, right? You're going to hear a lot of more complaining. So I hope he can understand that, you know, going forward. Coaching is not just X's and O's. That's right. You can talk to any high-level coach. They'll tell you most of their job is, is almost being a therapist. People management. It's people management. It's communication. And if you spend a lot of time around a lot of different people and a lot of big personalities, some of those personalities who make a lot more money than you and have a bigger profile than you, they might not take it so kindly that you're calling them outside their name. They might not like it that you're raising their voice off of some routine mistake that was the first mistake of the camp. I, I don't like yellers. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. definitely a yeller. But if I'm yelling, we're going at it, and it's, uh, I might remember what I said, I might not. Who knows? Who knows how this is going? So I don't like to yell because I'm meaner than you. I'm crazier than you. I'm going to say more destructive things than you. So I don't want to get to that emotional point, especially if you're trying to relate something to me, relate something to me that I need to remember, that I need to internalize and repeat. It, to me, it's not an effective way to do anything. Coaching, teach, even yeah. in some cases, parent. Everyone responds differently to that kind of animosity and that kind of language. And you're right. That old school stuff when the coaches and, and, and people in, in power controlled everything, that worked because nobody had a choice. But now the power dynamic has shifted a lot. You're not going to talk to me any old type of way. I don't even know that I've ever even heard this before. <laughs> Players going to the head coach in camp to discuss the approach, which we all know approach means how he's talking to me because mm -hmm. nope. they're not complaining about his scheme. They're not complaining about the plays that he wants to run. How he's talking to me as a grown man, I'm going to another grown man to have this conversation about how inappropriate this is. I don't even know if I've ever even heard that. So this might shed light as to why he hasn't been hired as a head coach. That's a great point. Because you have to be able to not just deal with one side of the ball or the other or make sure that people are motivated. You have to talk to people. Talk. Communicate. You hear what I'm saying? You receiving it? I receive you. You receive me. I see you. I see you. Okay, let's go on and do our job. This is a professional setting. Schultz, in my mind, the, the greatest coaches and are the greatest teachers. Coaching, teaching are really, yeah, uh, they're parallel. Mm -hmm. They're the same thing. The greatest coaches and the greatest teachers are the most adaptable, the most malleable. They are most able to cater their style so that the receiver can understand. 
And when I hear the drama going on in Washington, I'm thinking to myself, 2-5, like, how are we hearing controversy before we ever hear praise? Mm. I have not heard anything positive yet coming out of Washington. Haven't heard that Sam Howell's out there balling, Jahan Dawson getting busy, Scary Terry getting busy. I'm sure they are. I'm not saying it's not occurring. But why is the loudest echo out of Washington drama because of EB? I'm not of the old school because the old school isn't still in the NFL. Right. Ask Bill Belichick. Yeah, I would say mm. that it's the second coach in a week, Sean Payton was the first, that said something they didn't mean to say. And now we're seeing Ron Rivera, who's a player's coach. Player's coach, yeah. Walk it back and say, I didn't really mean to say that. I put my foot in my mouth. Now, I'm not a fan of yelling either. And Eric Bieniemy has been a bridesmaid for a long time. He's been rumored to be a head coach for the last decade, it feels like. Why isn't EB getting the opportunity? He's overqualified. He's a great... The bottom line is, this will not be tolerated. Now, there is a potential silver lining here, and that's, could there be a sense of empowerment of trust that's created from this happening now before you start losing a couple games, which, which they will, winning a couple games, so that once you get to the regular season, both sides will be more simpatico and the enemy can have the trust of the players. I would ask you that. I would say... What, can I ask you that? that once, once how, does, how does that get trust of the team? Well, oh, well I'm up. saying Rivera could be empowering the enemy and the enemy could potentially say to the players, this is on me, I came in too hot. Is that possible? Can you can you fix it once it's already been down this road? I, I don't see it going like that. I, I, you know what I see? I see that um, there probably was a meeting, right, in the offense where the Airbnb probably said, hey, listen, if I made it come off too strong, that's that's on me. But we need to find a, a, a mutual understanding where if you have an issue with something, y'all bring it to me and let's hash it out. If you've seen what Rivera said, he said that, you know, it's been some growth. And when he said that That's in the last three days, so I said, that let, that let me know that, okay, they, they talked about this. Yeah. It was that big of an issue where he, he brought it to the offense. Hey, look, we need to be on the same page. If I'm saying something a certain way that you're not receiving it, let's work it out. I don't want to yell at you and make, make you feel uncomfortable, right? And I, and I can see that they, they, they some, somewhere they made that happen where now players feel more comfortable to talk to Aaron. So, so can this lead to something good is the question. It could, but I think it would take, uh, like Shady's saying, it's going to take humility. But one of my favorite quotes I've ever heard in life as it pertains to relationships is very simple. Rules without relationship equals rebellion. Rules without relationship equals rebellion. If you come down laying down the law, but you don't have a relationship with somebody, they will instantly rebel. Whether that is parent to child, whether that is teacher to student, whether that is coach to athlete. If you lay down rules, but you have no relationship, there will be rebellion. Eric Bieniemy doesn't have a relationship with none of these dudes yet. I see guys like Tyreek Hill uh, tweeting, guys like Patrick Mahomes tweeting. My homeboy, Jamal Charles, played at the University of Texas. He talked to me in person a month and a half ago. Man, shady tripping, big dog. You know, AEB, good money. But there were relationships at play. EB was Jamal Charles' running back coach at first. EB was there with Tyreek Hill when he was drafted to the Chiefs. EB was there with Patrick Mahomes when he was drafted there. So there are relationships. Thus, you can be a little more contentious. But if you ain't got a relationship 2-5, you got to work that out first. And I feel like a lot of players that, that played for him and a lot of coaches that, that coach with him, they, they know how he gets down. So it's, it's not even a surprise that... He was one of the, the, the main head, uh, candidates to get jobs as a head coach, right? And, and let's think about it. Any, any office coordinator that has that much success with the Chiefs or any offense, right. they don't get a chance to get a job, sure. right? So why, why, what was his issue? People said race. They People said, said that. Race. They, they said say that. Race. Okay. But, but I feel like it was the way he acts. So now, hearing all the rumors, how he conducts himself in practice, now you're seeing it. Now he's only he's there for two weeks, and now you saw all these reports about how he's acting. That had a lot to do with him not getting hired. Because if I'm bringing you to my franchise, right? Now, granted, they don't have a lot of super powerful players. You know, Scary Terry. Mm -hmm. They don't have no, no super big names on offense. But you bring that, that type of attitude to a team, let's say like, like the Dolphins. They got some pretty good... It's not going gonna, it's, it's to go well, right? Where you got young guys that are not at that level where they can't speak about it as much. So when I think about him not getting that job, that's kind of why. Well, I'm going to let this dude come and run my team when everything I heard is negativity when it comes to the players. Schultz, I have a question for you. Sorry to interrupt. I'm sure you're about to break news over there. But who do you blame more, Rivera or the enemy? Reason I ask you this pivotal question is, if y'all remember last year, Ron Rivera was at the podium. Questions were asked, and they said, Coach Rivera, what's the biggest problem with this team currently? Quarterback. The heck? Like, even though Carson Wentz was notably struggling, everybody and their mama knew it. 
You don't say that. Now, Carson Wentz, six months later, is still out of the league. I do believe that he's capable of being one of the 96 best quarterbacks sure. in the National Football League. Eric Bieniemy is in line to replace Ron Rivera, who is on the hot seat, America, by the way. Absolutely. What do you make of Ron Rivera saying this? Coaches should be wiser than to, to some degree, throw their OC under the bus. Break this down for me. Well, I would wonder if Rivera is subconsciously thinking, I need to reassert myself as the number one guy. I'm the head coach in theory, yes. But I also want to make sure everyone, including inside and outside the building, knows that I have all the control, all the power here. Obviously, new ownership. But Ron Rivera has to know. He's a smart guy. He played in the league a long time. He has to know that if they don't win, He's in trouble. Of course. And Eric Bieniemy left Kansas City to take this job, the same co offensive coordinator, same role, knowing full heart that there was, there was an opportunity to be the number one guy in Washington. Subscribe here to get the latest from Speak and go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.